What's up, guys? Welcome to G Whiskey. My name is Jeff. This is a channel where I offer my thoughts and opinions on a specific whiskey, and once in a while, I'll throw in a list as well. If that sounds interesting, hit subscribe down below. And with that out of the way, let's jump into our list. Today, we're looking at my top 10 peated 10 year old whiskeys. Stick around. All right, so we're back with another list today. We're looking at my top 10 peated 10 year old whiskeys. Uh, this was actually an idea put forward by one of my subscribers and I thought it would be a fun idea. So here we are. So a few rules before we jump in. I'm only going to be looking at official distillery releases. No IBs or independent bottles. No undisclosed malts. Only the official stuff that gets put out by the brand. Uh, second, there's going to be nothing past strength in here. So everything on this list is going to be at its standard bottling strength, whatever that might be. Also, the usual disclaimer when you're A, ranking something, and B, talking about peated whiskeys, because people get really fired up over peated whiskeys for some reason. Uh, this is just for fun. This is just an opinion. Don't take it too seriously. If you disagree, tell you what, put your list down below in the comments. I'd love to read it. In terms of what we're going to be covering on this list, there are a few whiskeys that probably would have made it on, but didn't for whatever reason. Either I haven't had them for a really long time, or I just haven't had them at all. I've never tried the Glen Turret 10 Peat Smoke. I've never tried the Lefroy 10 Sherry Oak, uh, something like the Ben Nevis 10, which is gently peated. Haven't had that for a really long time. So there are a few whiskeys that probably would have made it, but didn't. And what else? Um, okay, in terms of how peated these whiskeys are, there's no rules with regards to that. Some are gonna be heavily peated, some are gonna be lightly peated, and some fall somewhere in between. Um, and I think that's it, that's all our bases covered. So with all that said, let's jump into our list. And in the meantime, if you could kindly leave a like down below, that'd be greatly appreciated. All right, so we're gonna kick things off with number 10. This is a whiskey that I reviewed not too long ago and it didn't really come together for me. I wasn't a big fan of this stuff. And it does have its fans. There were a few people in the comments. There's definitely some reviewers out there who do enjoy it, but it's not one for me really. Uh, I'm talking about the Balkan 10. This is a peated expression from the Edra Dower Distillery. I found that there was a funkiness to this that didn't really work with the peat in here. Um, I've since bought other Balkans that are quite good, so this one might just be an anomaly, but it's their entry level expression, and I was not impressed. So, yeah, number 10, Balkan 10. Next up, our number 9 is kind of a guilty pleasure for me. It's not a great whiskey. It's got a 40% ABV. We do have some sweet sherry in here. We have some leathery notes. It's definitely not complex, but yeah, number 9 is the Bowmore 10 Dark and Intense. This one was initially a travel retail exclusive. Again, it's not a great whiskey, but it's fun, it's cheap. It comes in a one liter bottle. It's got that classic Bowmore profile, which is definitely a take it or leave it type thing, but I'm okay with it. So yeah, it's definitely not like a top offering, but it does have its charms. So number nine, Bowmore 10, Dark and Intense. Next up, we're gonna ruffle a few feathers. We have the entry level age stated offering from one of Isla's most beloved distilleries. Uh, a lot of people love this one. I'm sure nostalgia is a factor there because this whiskey has certainly gotten a lot of people into peated whiskeys. I'm talking about the Laphroaig 10. We've got classic Laphroaig flavors in here. This is a whiskey that would be very big, very punchy if it hadn't been neutered, if they hadn't watered it down to 40% ABV. Now that might be 43% if you live in the States, so lucky you guys. But it's one of those whiskeys where the flavors are great, but the intensity is just not there. And that's unfortunate because this is a brand that really does have great flavors and they're at their best when they're kind of punchy and in your face. And we're just not getting that here. We've got a bit of a watery texture and our flavors are a little bit too light. So our number eight is going to be Lefroy 10. Next up, we're heading over to Speyside, which is usually the home of more like sherried style whiskeys. But this is the latest iteration of their 10-year-old peated expression. It's naturally presented at 46% ABV, non-chill filtered, natural color. We're looking at the Ben Riech Smoky 10. This one combines bourbon barrels, toasted virgin oak barrels, and Jamaican rum casks. Now, it's not a banger, but it is a solid example of a peated mainland style whiskey. So it's going to be a little bit less maritime, more earthy. It's a different profile. It isn't going to be for everyone. To be honest, I was kind of struggling about where I'd put this one and the Laphroaig. I was thinking I'd put the Laphroaig higher up because I do actually prefer the flavors in that one. But this one's naturally presented, so it got a little bit of an edge there. Um, listen, it's a good one. I like it. I don't love it, but it is something different. It's unique, and it is of certain quality. So it's worth checking out if you haven't already. Number seven, Ben Riech Smoky 10. 
Next up for our number six, we're going to be staying in the space side region. We have another peated space cider here, although this one is much more gently peated. This might be the most gently peated whiskey on this list. If not, it's definitely one of them. Uh, it's first filled bourbon and first filled sherry cask matured. Another 10 year old, obviously. I'm talking about the Ben Romic 10. Ben Romic has such a unique and charming house style. I'm a big fan of them, even though this 10 year old is one of their weakest offerings. This one comes in at 43%. It should be 46%. We do lose a little bit of texture and intensity there, but it's still a solid 10 year old. It's affordable, it's delicious. So number six, Ben Romic 10. All right, so we made it to our top five. And honestly speaking, this is where we get into the proper stuff, the real deal. Uh, we're gonna start off with an Isla whiskey, one that is a classic, it's a legend, it's a staple. You all know it. I'm sure some of you probably have this one as your number one. Once upon a time, this one would have ranked higher on my list. Although honestly speaking, I am enjoying it a little bit less these days than I once did. Still excellent stuff. I'm talking about Ardbeg 10. I realize this is a bit of a hot button issue, but I don't think the standard Ardbeg range is as good as it once was. I think Ardbeg has shifted too much focus towards these overpriced special releases, and I think the standard line has suffered from it. Uh, the 10 year old here, it's still a great whiskey. It's the flagship whiskey, but it's not what it used to be. But still, this is quality stuff. It's a punchy Isla staple, uh, classic Ardbeg flavors in this. It's definitely not a bells and whistles type of whiskey. Uh, it's a sort of classic Isla scrapper and we love it for it. So it's still good and it still breaks into the top five for me. Number five, Ardbeg 10. Next up for our number four, we're leaving Isla. We're heading over to another island. We're going to the Isle of Skye, which means you guys already know what I'm about to say here. Number four is the Talisker 10. Now, Talisker recently changed their label from what you see here to this, and I think there was a bit of a shift in recipe with regards to what cast they're using to make the 10 year old, but the new one is just as good as the old one, and it's still fantastic stuff. Talisker is a classic, it's a legend. We have those maritime notes, mineral notes, peppery notes in there. Nobody does it quite like them. I love them every bit as much today as I did when I first started drinking them like 12 years back. So yeah, number four, Talisker 10. All right, so we made it to the top three, and I don't think my top three are gonna be that surprising to a lot of you. If you're plugged into the whiskey community, all of these whiskeys are widely regarded as very high quality peated 10 year old whiskeys. We're gonna start off with number three being Lejeg 10. I love the Lejeg character. I feel like it gets that funk right where the Balkan didn't. And like Talisker, this isn't one that's gonna win you over with like endless complexity. It's more just the uniqueness and the quality of its character. It's peaty, it's funky, it's engaging, it's interesting, it's affordable. And it's one that's gotten a lot better with time. This didn't used to be a great bottling. A few years back, the Lejeg 10 wasn't on most people's radars. It certainly wasn't on mine, but the new bottling is fantastic. I can't say enough nice stuff about it. I'm happy to join the chorus of voices out there singing this one's praise. Excellent whiskey, so number three, Lejeg 10. You know, my top three whiskeys were all a bit of a crapshoot. They're three very different whiskeys, and depending on my mood, I might reach for any one of them at any given time. Uh, like the Lejeg 10, our number two is very much in vogue right now, and like the Lejeg, it deserves it. It's excellent stuff. PC 10. We've got some first fill bourbon casks in here. We've got some wine casks, but this is still a peaty beast of a whiskey first and foremost. Uh, we have some great maritime notes in here with some like subtle fruitiness behind it. Nice punchy 50% ABV. And we have some great transparency from the brand. So really it feels like this stuff was tailor made for the whiskey nerd crowd like us. And we do appreciate that. It's a unique and delicious whiskey that you guys all should be buying, supporting and enjoying. Number two, Port Charlotte 10. All right, down to our number one. This one is another fan favorite. Now this isn't explicitly said, but it is implicitly understood that this distillery was founded by Jesus, managed by Vishnu, with Buddha acting as the master distiller. Did I just offend everyone in the world? Anyway, every bottle they put out is holy water. Their whiskey is the nectar of the gods. I know it sounds like I'm mocking here, and I might be, but good God, this whiskey is delicious. Springbank 10. This is another whiskey that's not heavily peated, but we do have a nice peaty touch here. And of course we have that rugged side. So it's a little bit punchy. It's a little bit dirty. It's that unmistakable spring bank character that we all love. Now I do realize there are some availability issues with the 10 year old. And I do hope that spring bank is hiring more, producing more, ramping up production. 
whatever they need to do to get more bottles of this stuff out there. I mean, obviously that would take like 10 years, but you know what I mean? There's definitely some supply and demand issues with this product, so be aware of that. Don't pay an arm and a leg for this stuff. It's meant to be a reasonably priced whiskey, but if you can find it for a reasonable price, this is as good as it gets. So number one, Springbank Tide. All right, guys, that's it. That's the list. I hope you enjoyed it. Again, there was some stuff that got left out. Either these are whiskeys that I haven't had in a long time or I haven't had them at all. Maybe I forgot something. Tell you what, let me know what your list is. What's your top 10 or maybe your top five 10 year old peated whiskeys? Do you agree with me? Do you think I'm way off the mark? Let me know down in the comments. And I guess that's it. That's all I have for you guys today. So thank you very much for watching. If you want to help support the channel, please consider becoming a patron. Otherwise, you can always like, comment, and subscribe. I do appreciate it. We'll see you next time. Bye, guys.